Hey, Megan, listen to that. Do you hear that sound? I don't hear anything. That's right. Or driving an electric car, and they are so quiet, they can really sneak up on you. More and more people are opting for electric cars, but they need more than gas to make them run. That's right. They need an outlet. <laughs> Technically, all homes are equipped to charge an electric car. You can simply plug them into any standard outlet. And that's what we have right here. But depending upon the travel you do on a daily basis, you might want to consider making your home electric vehicle or EV ready by moving up to a level two charging system. Joining us is Glenn Henry with Acme Electric. And Glenn, what does it mean to be ready for level two charging? Typically, that means if you're thinking, Megan, about buying an electric vehicle, I would suggest calling a licensed electrical contractor prior to buying the car, having them out, having a discussion on what kind of car you're buying, uh, having them get you comfortable with the differences between a level one, level two charging system and placement of the vehicle, those kind of things. Well, help us understand a little bit, you know, uh, level one is what, and then going up to level two, just kind of help us understand that, uh, Glenn. Yep. Pretty simple, level one is plugging into a 15 or 20 amp, 120 volt dedicated outlet, okay? Level two is plugging into typically a 40 amp, 240 volt dedicated outlet. So uh, if I've got my electric car, uh, the real benefits of having that level two charger would be what? Think of it this way. You're getting more volume of power into your onboard charging system. So you're charging at a quicker rate and a little more efficient. Okay, what are the, what's the time difference? If I you know, plug in one way, plug in another way, can you put it in terms of how many hours drive time we might have or how long it might take to fully charge the car? So a typical level one charger, you'll get about three to five miles of driving time per hour of charging time. So not real quick. And a typical level two charger, you can charge a car somewhere in the five to seven hour range. Wow, so that's a significant yeah, difference, yeah. really. So what does that homeowner have to keep in mind? If, okay, I, I've decided I wanna to go to a level two uh, charging. What do I have to keep in mind and, and what do you advise me uh, in going to that level? Well, like I said, that pre-assessment, when you're thinking of buying the car, having a electrical contractor come out, in the assessment, once again, we're gonna explain the differences in the chargers, give you an idea of price of chargers, the important thing we're going to do is assess your existing electrical panel and make sure you've got enough capacity in there to take the increased load of a charger. So I was, going to, I was just going to ask, do we need to alter our power supply within our home? Mm, hopefully not, but at times you might. You know, a typical home built in the last 20 to 30 years is going to usually have enough capacity left in it. You know, the older homes with the old 100 amp, screw in fuse panels, those kind of things, you're probably gonna look at a service upgrade to put a level two charger in. Now, where would I buy a charger like this? Is that something I buy through an electrician or are there other sources? You can, they're available on the internet. Um, big box stores carry them, electrical distributors, buy them through an electrical contractor. I will warn you, there's all kinds of chargers out there. The prices are all over the board. Do your homework. Talk to somebody that maybe has one, the benefits of theirs. Um, don't go out and buy the cheapest one you can find. There's been some cases where there's still some out there that may not be UL listed, might be some safety things to think about, and, and every charger's got its own little different capabilities. That's going, that's always great advice here in Powerhouse, and we always offer that. Do, do your research. Let me go the other way though. Could I just could I have a 220 volt uh, plug-in installed? Uh, could I just do that? You could, there's cords out there. It's not gonna save you a lot of money. Um, the advantages of the level two charging system, they've got some safety benefits built into them. They monitor the electrical circuit, making sure everything's uh, doing what it should be doing. It's got uh, some safety benefits uh, to protect your onboard charging system of your car. Most of them have uh, indication lights telling you when it's in charging mode, telling you when you got a full charge, which is a benefit to you. Uh, this particular charger here 
is internet capable, so it's got its own IP address. The homeowner we installed it for can pull this charger up on his smartphone, look at hours of usage, how it converts into kilowatt hours, and kind of a neat. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what this whole show is about, is smart homes and connecting like that. It's, it's fascinating. We always like to, on Powerhouse, give our, our, our viewers a sense of what are we talking in terms of dollars and cents. So give us, I know it's kind of a ballpark and things are always changing, but, but right now as we look at a level two charging system, if I have to upgrade my electrical service panel, give us a sense of that. As far as the level two charger, I would probably plan on spending somewhere in the neighborhood. I know this is a big range, but 500 to $800. Okay. Um, Electrical service upgrade, uh, broad number would probably be 1500 to $2,000. Okay. okay, now those are high numbers, but we've also got to remember if someone goes out to invest in an electric car in itself, it is all an investment up front, and the big savings comes with using it over time. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. We better get charged up, Pete. I think we better get this, car, get this car plugged in, right? If you'd like more information about charging systems for electric cars, go to AlliantEnergy.com slash electric cars.